right, babies, it's that time again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Letting someone pass me. Oh, yeah. In fact, there's a good little lesson for you there. Deference to others, oh my gosh. Wow. No matter what we've been through, in all its uniqueness, and all its challenges, we can never really assume to know how someone else is perceiving what is before them. I think that's why we need to defer to others and do everything we can to help them discover their next best step of growth. Because in their mind, it might be so challenging that they are either afraid to take a new step or don't know what step is necessary or both. Therefore, that's where our Jesus compassion comes in. And we look for an opportunity to be useful to them. I was watching this thing on Netflix. Uh, I would say, if you're easily triggered, <laughs> I would not recommend watching it. And it's called Midnight Mass. And I think what they're trying to do in the uh, series show that somebody's going way too slow on the highway. <laughs> wow. All right, baby. Um, I think what they're trying to do is show that leadership in religion be corrupt and that in spite of that the people of the church can still thrive oh yeah not a <laughs> not a likely scenario but I get the point because it's sort of what my own experience has been you know, the reason why I do these things the way I do them is because I don't have a church where I respect the leadership in such a way that I'm willing to defer to them. No. <laughs> they can defer to me. <laughs> okay. They can figure out I have the word of God and they don't, all right? I'm not saying that's of everybody, but I just haven't met anyone that has a similar view to mine. And mine is setting me free, so why would I why would I play with something that's going to be less fulfilling, less rewarding? less satisfying so yeah be careful on midnight mass because <laughs> for a couple of episodes you feel like it's okay I guess this is kind of a hallmark kind of a situation I'm not sure I really want to see it it's kind of corny nothing's happening and then all you know what breaks loose <laughs> 
and it's a whole different story. Which is interesting to me because, hang on a second. It kind of reminds me of regular life, everyday life, I should say, or what most people experience in their life. Just some kind of traumatic event occurs that just it just becomes kind of this upheaval and yeah I really have the Lord's compassion for people who experience that because most of the time, we don't know how best to respond to it because it's not something that characterized our lives. Now, me on the other hand, <laughs> my life has been punctuated by frequent traumas and upheavals. Family, and business, and relationships, and health, and, and, and opportunity, and employment. I mean, just con almost constant upheaval. <laughs> so I'm sort of, uh, I'm used to it. But my heart goes out for those of you who are going through things that are so challenging and upsetting that you really don't know what to do because you don't have the frame of reference in most of your life and learning what to do. All of a sudden the school bus is slowed, the school van slowed way down here. Okay, in Jesus' name, we release safety in that situation and all those like it all across the earth. Oh, yeah. Because we're in charge, baby. We do what we do because that's who we are. Speaking of traumatic events, I'm sorry, I don't mean to minimize yours. But I just spent $89 to have a stereo speaker replaced in my car. And that wasn't the issue. Evidently, it's the, the unit. So the stereo has to get replaced. But even little, you know, setbacks like that that are, you know, the opposite of what you expected or, ho or hoped for, those can turn into derailments. In fact, when it occurred, I had to really uh, talk myself uh, down a bit and just like, okay, <laughs> it's, it's not a big deal. You can afford a new stereo. Yes, the $89 was totally unnecessary, but you can do this. <laughs> I had to kind of do that to myself. And then something else happened, like right after that, that was also annoying, but a minor annoyance. But it really, it was like the two of them, <laughs> the two of them really kind of set me off. And I really had to, I'm like, Lord, I need your help here. I can see I'm not doing well. And as soon as I started kind of laughing about it, then I, I felt better. But if I didn't start laughing, I think I would. Uh, I think I could have gone in a, a kind of a downward spiral for the rest of the day. So just look for those opportunities, sweetheart, to call out to the Lord. Look for His perspective, His presence, His overall purpose, and how we can help you to be stronger 
and the catastrophe that you're experiencing. 